Thanks for listening to The Adam Carolla Show on Podcast One. As a young boy, Gavin loved playing football. He lived and breathed it, wanted to go pro. Why he'd spent hours upon hours just practicing his touchdown dances. And one day, while getting fitted for bifocals, he realized he was never much good at throwing, or running, or catching, or even kicking. Yeah, Gavin's chances of playing pro football were looking like fourth and long. Very long. But he did hear how Geico could save him money on car insurance, so he switched and saved. Then he did kind of a touchdown dance. At least he was still good at that. And now, Sonny Corolla reads a tweet from James Woods. The only magic wand Obama had was the one making his sealed secret past disappear. Now, back to the Adam Carolla Show. Ike Barinholtz in studio. The Oath, the name of the movie. I'm so in love with my son oh my reading God. James Woods' tweets. <laughs> Mom is worried it's going to haunt him in the future. <laughs> he might end up being a brilliant character actor, though. But I said to her, woman, what precedent do you have of something that somebody did so many years ago coming back, coming to, back haunt to haunt them? them? Look around. It's never happened Everybody's before. Fine. You think it's going to be the first? The past the past. <laughs> Please. It's narcissistic for you to think that way. <laughs> Uh, Wake up and watch uh, some Rachel Maddow, would you? <laughs> Ike Barinholtz here. The Oath, the name of the movie, in select theaters today. That is Friday, as you hear this, October 12th. And then everywhere next uh, Friday, October 19th, written and directed uh, also by Ike, right? But, but I'd like to talk about A Star is Born a little more. Please. <laughs> so much to unpack. Guys, I'm going to... What would you like to know? I'm going to announce it right now. Um, <clears throat> I'm re- remaking... The stars, a star is born again. Oh, I'm remaking the latest version. Oh. Lucky yeah. number five. Yeah, yeah. I haven't so seen soon. the movie yet. I heard usually there's a few decades between. I think the time is time. iterations. But but I'm gonna flip the script. Okay. I'm gonna be the undiscovered talent, and I'm gonna cast an older actress That's good. to play like a a, a Susan Sarandon. Type. Yes, perfect. She's very much in the news. Is okay. Lovey from Gilligan's Island still with us? <laughs> is Rose Marie still alive? You get her cheap, <laughs> Rose Marie. <laughs> God, her whole it, her whole thing was having a bow in her hair. Yes, oh. a big yes. side bow. Yes. It was back when, <laughs> like, you could get by, like, hey, are you funny? No. Are you talented? No. Well, just put a tag on your hat and go out <laughs> the Grand old Opry. My grandmother said opera, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just go ahead and go out there and just, that'll be your thing. Yeah. Your thing will be, you'll have something on your hat. How many it. times did Rosemary say, at least I'm going to outlive Betty White? Mm. <laughs> yep. Here never, we are. It didn't never happen. happened. It didn't happen. God bless her. God bless you, Rosemary. The show, was it like Match Game or Hollywood Square? Hollywood Squares was probably Rose Marie's thing, if you if you Which find one? her. The one that like Gilbert was always on? That, that I, was the, I was on one of the iterations. Yeah, the, like the mid-2000s one, I feel like. Yeah. I remember seeing yes. that. Yeah. <laughs> Jim J. Bullock. <laughs> Jim J. Bullock. Jim. Not Jim. 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 No yeah. I. There's no I in that, Jim. Oh. And very sad as well. Um <laughs> I'm looking at you, Ike. I'm, I'm going to give everyone some. Uh, I'm going to give some homework to Chris Max Pata. I, I, my thing is, I look at people and I go, "That's what that person looks like." <laughs> like when I famously looked at uh, wide receiver Chris Carter and said he looked like Godzuki. If you see Chris Carter, he looks almost exactly like Godzuki. Mm-hmm. And uh, you bet. can show that to Ike, and he'll he'll understand. He'll, I have my my bona fides uh, when he sees that. Or my actually, my grandma just texted me from the room. It's bona fides. Bona fides. Yeah. Bona fides. Yeah, bona fides. Yeah, bona fides. <laughs> but um, I better hear the word Wahlberg come out of your mouth. <clears throat> I got Mark Wahlberg, but I have him mixed with a deep cut friend of mine. Uh, does a lot of TV car shows. Bodie Stroud. Mm. Big dude like who I does a lot of those times a day. You get the Bodie, <laughs> Bodie, Bodie, is that you? And I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, oh, it's not. It's it's the Wahlberg who owns the hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ralph Wahlberg. I had I had a Wahlburgers. Uh, they're good. All right, I, I was surprised. If, if you don't think I know what I'm talking about, well, then you just look. At, <laughs> we're looking at Godzuki and Chris Carter. Take your time with Wahlberg and uh, Bodie Stroud. That's going to be a uh, second. I'll take it's gonna it. going to be a minute. I'll take the, it. The uh, Oath, lots of good uh, talent in this. I saw the trailer. It looked very funny. And you were, Ike said all the all the great punchlines in it. Tiffany Haddish is in this. John She's Cho's very funny. This John Cho is well. wonderful, man. Yeah. Wonderful. You, you wrote and directed. I wrote and directed it. 
It's it's basically uh, – you know when you're uh, home for Thanksgiving and you know you're about to get in a huge fight with your family about uh, politics? Right mm-hmm. Imagine if that was a 90-minute movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I pitch it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's violent. It's dark. Um, but optimistic, I think, at the end. And all the great archetypes are represented. Yeah, that was a thing, you know. The girlfriend is uh, oh, she steals is special. the show. She's, she's special, great. yeah. You know, it was basically after uh, after the 2016. Do you guys remember the 2016 presidential election? Mm. We had a, Was that an election year? Do you guys remember that? It was an election year. I don't know if we year. had a show that I'll night. I'll look it up. Well, I remember the day, but then it just kind of blacked out in terms of coverage <laughs> after that. Yeah, so no I'm one not even sure what Trump's up to these away. days. But, yeah. uh, uh that Thanksgiving, right? I had my mom and my dad, and my whole family at uh, dinner, and we were drinking pretty heavily after dinner. <laughs> and my mom and brother and I got in this huge argument about the election, and we were saying crazy things to each other, like "It's your fault," <laughs> which is like a crazy thing to say to someone. And I woke up the next day, I said to my wife, "It's so crazy that we got in that fight because we're all like pretty much on the same side." So I started talking to friends of mine who were going home and telling me, like, I shoved my uncle and uh, I called my aunt a whore and all these horror stories. And I just wanted to kind of take that feeling and, and kind of blow it up a little bit. I only thing I really remember about the election is that the inauguration set a record but it also yep. set a record for most camouflage tents that they would use in Vietnam when they were trying to not get a <laughs> helicopter get, yeah, bomb. Yeah, a lot, I, could, could, I could see a, there was a lot of people under a lot of those cami I remember, that, I remember for, that, too. Pop-ups. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. I just remember uh, Mike Love and Mark McGrath singing. That's okay. the only thing I remember. <laughs> I was, oh, now we got to laugh about Mike Love today because I, somebody <laughs> tweeted me, I'm in love with Mike Love because he is not photographed without a hat that says Beach Boys. <laughs> On it, like when he, if you, if you broke into his bathtub, if you, if you kicked in his shower door and took a shot of him, he would quickly grab. I'm not saying he showers with it on, right. but if he, he, he might, he would be within arm's reach. No, no, he's not. A, Ike, he doesn't shower with it on. Can you say that with 100 percent certainty? He's uh, outside of his mind. I can say if you kicked in that lucite door and po- and whipped out a camera before you could click off a shot, he would have a Beach Boys cap on. I've always been a bigger Al Jardine fan. He was always the true yeah, genius of the yeah. Beach Boys. I think yeah. most 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 aficionados would agree with that. I think. How much uh, does Al Jardine hate the fact there's a guy named Al Jarreau? <laughs> um, show me Mike Love. So somebody tweeted me this picture uh, because they love finding pictures of, of Mike Love wearing Beach Boys hats. I now uh, basically say it, it'd be a se- it'd be essentially like if uh, Trump dressed up as Uncle Sam whenever he went out, like, which he should do and which I do believe he'll do in the third year of his second term. Yes. This is yes. from today. He's wearing his Beach Boys hat. He, he always wears a Beach Boys hat. And now it's like formal, like he's wearing black, yeah. it's black tie and he's wearing a yeah. Beach Boys hat. But here's my thing. If I'm, if I could get Mike Love's ear for just one moment. <clears throat> and I, if this makes sense, agree. And if it doesn't, I'm, I'm open to criticism. Copy that. I would say, <clears throat> if I, you're 74 years old, if I ran into you wearing a Beach Boy hat and then just another old guy not wearing a Beach Boy hat, and you said to me, which one of these guys you think is in the Beach Boys, mm-hmm. I would pick the other guy without the Beach Boy hat before you. I don't feel like it's helping your cause. No. Yeah, you feel you like, like an old fan. guy in a Beach Boy hat yeah. because no one in the Beach Boys would wear a Beach Boy hat it's everywhere. Like I was in Houston years ago with a friend of mine and we were at a Foot Locker and my friend goes, oh my God, behind us is Jeff Bagwell. And I turned <laughs> and looked, there was a guy who kind of looked like Jeff Bagwell, but he was wearing a Jeff Bagwell jersey. And I said to my friend, I, I can tell you who that's not for sure. That's not <laughs> Jeff Bagwell. Right. And he goes, it is. And he walked up to him and asked him for an autograph. And the guy's like, oh, I'm not Jeff Bagwell. And I was like, of course not. He's wearing a Jeff Bagwell jersey, man. It was Craig Biggio. I, <laughs> it was one of the killer bees. I do with that said, I do wear my mad TV coat everywhere I go, baby. <laughs> I had a... Uh, Are you Bobby Lee? <laughs> don't think I haven't gotten that. <laughs> I want to thank uh, MedMen for this uh, half of the show, MedMen.com and Geico. Geico.com. 
I had a, a Loveline rain jacket, just as one of these, you know, they they always give out jackets. Sometimes always. they're, they're crew gifts like are Letterman always jackets. jackets yeah. like crew. And and they gave out the first season of Loveline on MTV. They gave out like the crew jacket. And it was a really good rain jacket with the hood and the Ooh. thing and the fleece. And it was like, oh, you don't need an umbrella. You have this jacket. But it said Loveline in huge yeah. yellow. But I did occasionally want to go out in it when it was raining, and I took a Sharpie, and I just Sharpied out the, the I did the same thing part. with a Mindy Project hat one time, because mm-hmm. I didn't have any hat. I was out of town, and I just I didn't want to wear a hat, because people were going to come up to me. Oh so I, I put a little bit of tape over uh, the Mindy part, and it just said, the project. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same thing, too, not because I was involved with the show. I just don't like the show. I, so... Son I hope of a you bitch. take that in the spirit Son which of a was bitch. intended. I will say, you know, crew gifts are almost always like clothing, right? But I was in charge of the crew gifts at Mindy. And one season, I was like, I'm not going to – I don't want to do a jacket. I want to do something different. And, I, I, you know, we get screeners, right? You get mm-hmm. screeners, you know? And I remember flying and being like, oh, I want to watch a screener on a plane, but I, I can't. So I was like, oh, what if I got little portable DVD players that have mm-hmm. a flip screen? Nice. little clamshell. I bought 180 of them. <laughs> I gave them out, and when people opened it, it was like you gave them a turd. They were like, <laughs> like first of all, they all had tablets. This wasn't like in 2002. This was like 2013. Like everyone has a tablet. <laughs> people, and they also ran out of batteries like like 15 minutes in. It was the most useless waste of money. Give me a buff vest. Give me a fleece vest. I'm uh, as we speak. I have a uh, hat on. That has the name of my company. I think it says chassis on it. Sure do. I had an Adam Carolla show hat. My dog Phil put his big canine into the brim of this hat at some point and dented it. But I still had to wear the hat that didn't have the name or my name on it. That so I think sense. I made that decision. I think what today. we learned here today, you you guys should spearhead like a celebrity uh, uh, merch exchange Swap system. Because That's like good. you got a great love line jacket, you got a great Mindy project hat. Yeah. And I was like, hey, let's let's do some. That's what my here. eBay account is for. Yeah. Check me out. I but just on other eBay. You want to buy a Mindy just, project just, fleece? Just, Brian, just I don't want to poke holes in <laughs> okay, it, but it's right. a slippery slope because okay. now you're like, yeah, oh, good. Thanks for the hat. Hey, your wife's kind of hot. <laughs> She's gonna swap in. Oh, I'm not saying. Just by the by, that's the thing. That's I'll like, come over to your place and get the hat. That's and you'd why. Be like, no, why don't we meet at the park? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it'll be so much nicer. I can come by. That's why, like, I don't do Craigslist. Like, even if you're selling a couch on Craigslist, the person who comes there is gonna think they're gonna have sex with you. <laughs> and I, I accommodate them because I don't want to be a bad right. host. You're people, pleaser. so I do it. I'm a people pleaser, literally. So I've had sex. I've sold four couches, and I've had sex with four strangers in the last year. <laughs> sure. And I'm, I don't care. I don't care. Judge me. Max Zapata said the last time I hosted the Dan Patrick show, I wore a hat with my name on it. Who does ah! that? I'll tell you who that's not. That's not Adam Carolla. <laughs> that is Adam Carolla. And I'll tell you why, God damn it. Why is Norm McDonald wearing an Adam Carolla hat? <laughs> yeah, it's my, uh, my, my, my Adam Carolla hat. <laughs> I wear this goddamn uh, hat. <laughs> That guy sounds hot. <laughs> <laughs> I We'll see how close I can get to that drop in a second. I'll tell you why I wore that goddamn hat. Because... Relentless self promotion <clears throat> they, they are... All I can say this about in terms of convenience. I live in La Cunada. Dan Patrick's show is further than LAX from my house. Mm. The call time is 5.30 yeah. in the morning. And you leave, I literally left my house at like four, I think I left my house at like 4.35 in the morning, drove further, it's out past LAX. And uh, it's they, in LAX. It's Terminal it's Two. It's Terminal Two. It's, Brad, it's, it's the Bradley Terminal. You do you do four hours and you don't get paid. I remember thinking to myself, <laughs> "Eff it, I'm putting my goddamn hat on." And you know what's good about it too is that unless you're really famous, people usually they might not recognize you and you don't want to have the most like embarrassing thing happen and when you show up to do a show or a podcast I'm like who are you right yeah. so you just wear a hat with your name on it they're like oh that's kind of that's him yeah guy. i cannot judge mike love any longer no, there, you're out. i think i think <laughs> you're right about that then. all right let me tell you about uh, something else you can't judge med men today's cannabis consumers are everywhere and everyone let's drop the labels at med men you're an executive, a parent, a customer. There's something for everyone, whether you're new to the cannabis world or familiar. They got stuff like flour and lotion and edibles, vape pens. 
uh, bath bombs and more. Touch screens that allow you to view in-depth products and uh, red-shirted uh, staff that are incredibly knowledgeable. They'll put you at ease. You can check out one of their 14 retail locations in L.A., Orange County, San Diego, or uh, my grandfather, my grandma just texted me from the was San Diego. Oh, San Diego. Diego. Yes. Wow. And now open the new store in uh, Las Vegas. They, uh, it's right on the strip there. It's at Paradise and Harmon. And you can visit uh, MedMen online. Go to MedMen.com to find the store nearest you. Right, Dawson? And for our listeners, visit any MedMen and mention Adam Carolla at checkout for $10 off your order. Keep out of reach of children for use only by adults 21 years of age and older. Check out MedMen today. My, my dad was just in town and mm-hmm. my brother took him to MedMen. Really? And I remember growing up, there was a commercial for Six Flags. I grew up in Chicago and it was a kid going to Six Flags for the first time and his hands started shaking so much because he's so excited. That was my dad. He couldn't, <laughs> like when you when you walk into MedMen for the first time, you you feel like you're, you're, you're in like a, a movie. Is he a cannabis enthusiast? Uh, yeah, yeah, mild cannabis enthusiast. Um, but, you know, when he wants to get pot, he has to call like his friend sure. who has to call his son and get, it's a whole thing and sure. they get like a bag of swag. You walk in a med man. Oh, oh right there. Shout out all the Michigas. What do they need me for? I got an Ike over here. Genuine endorsement. If you mention right Ike, uh, you get an additional <laughs> 5% off with your order. I should just throw that out there. <laughs> all right, let's take a quickie break. We'll come. Uh... <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Breaking, which one breaking. is Ike and which one's. I got my buddy Bodie Stroud in there. I also get Bill, late Bill Paxton, Tim Robbins. Someone told me Brett Kavanaugh. I was like, eat, eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That was your drunken uh, aunt at the. At it, the it, 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 it was my buddy Squee. <laughs> <laughs> Brett Kavanaugh on the looks department. You could do a lot. Yeah. Yes. Well, not really. Yeah. <laughs> Giant bloated mess. Well, <laughs> you look at every. I mean, who, really, you look at the Supreme Court. There are not a whole <laughs> lot of nines and tens yeah. on that. Yeah. Well, it's Justice bad. Roberts or no one else. Yeah. Roberts is kind of hot, but the rest of them Actually, are. Gorsuch is a handsome older man. Mm-hmm. You know, wow, Gorsuch Brian. is younger than uh, Kavanaugh. Wow. It's impossible. It's impossible. He's a silver fox. All right, we'll take a. Uh, but I got uh, not bad with Bodie Shroud in there. Yeah, that's right. Pretty good. All right, we'll take a quickie break. We'll come right back to the news right after this. Technology truths brought to you by Geico. Technology truths. Truth: Teenagers can communicate entirely in emojis. How was the birthday party? Pizza slice, kitten, soccer ball, pineapple. Truth: It's so easy to switch and save on car insurance at Geico.com. What are you talking about? Paperclip, shoulder shrug, high five, wizard hat? What? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Give me the news with Grad. News with Gino Grad. Breaking viral. All those crazy Trump tweets. Give me news with Gino Grad. Trouble in the Middle East. Celebrity drunk meltdowns. Seek news with Gina Gina Grad. The News with Gina Grad. Well, a lot going on in the news, but if we don't start with this, I don't think listeners are ever going to forgive us. Police had to remove a woman who brought her emotional support squirrel on a Frontier Airlines flight headed from Orlando to Cleveland. As we mentioned yesterday, Frontier says the passenger had noted in her reservation that she was bringing an emotional support animal, but she didn't say it was a squirrel. It's Frontier Airlines. They have squirrels on the tail on, on the tail. Oh, that's right. Uh, the that's planes. right. The mascot. The airline says rodents, including squirrels, are not allowed. The airline says uh, police were called when the passenger refused to leave the plane. Police requested the other the other passengers disembark while officers dealt with the woman who was eventually escorted into the main terminal. The flight for Cleveland left about two hours later. There's a picture of her looking like Norma Ray on a rascal. Can I just mm-hmm. say people are giving my mom a lot of grief for this. <laughs> and, and here's That's the your deal. mom, Mike? Yeah, it's my mom, okay? And, uh, you know, she found this squirrel mm-hmm. about four years ago when she was really, she had a, a, the technical term was the blues. Mm-hmm. And this, it was the only thing that gave her a modicum of joy and she clearly told frontier when she booked the ticket she was going to vegas for squirrel con and they, she told them this was the deal and typical frontier airlines once she's on the plane uh they, they you know they rescinded it all and embarrassed her and it's just it sucks for me it sucks for my mom and our family and i just screw frontier now airlines. look i'm not here to second guess your mom okay or your dad okay <clears throat> with or the squirrel in the cannabis but did she write 
I'm bringing Rocky on the plane, or did she say my squirrel Rocky? On the form, it says indicate support dog, cat, or other. So she just clicked other. She didn't think she had to put the name. Oh, okay. Understood. I see the problem here. Understood. Misunderstanding. Yeah, it was a huge misunderstanding. It's really embarrassing for my family. (laughs) I'm expecting an apology from Frontier, and I'm not flying them again until they apologize, and then I said it. I don't care. Uh, This thing... It's good you have this form. This thing where... You need to be dragged, you know, this part where you're, first off, can I just say this? Anything to do with a goddamn airport, do not hold your ground. Like, if you're trying to get into a fish concert and some bouncer goes, hey, dude, you got to clear out. You go, you know what? You're right, bro. I'll say, and then you like, you might be able to get in yeah, or you I might not be able to ticket. get in or something. On on an airplane, 0% chance you're ever going to get your way. Like, once someone says... You need to leave, and you go, no, and they go, then I'm going to get the cops, and you go, fine. It's not like the person's going to go, well, I tried. Would you like a Pepsi? We're going to be taxing. No, they're going to get the cops. People who protest on flights are zero for a million lifetime. Like, it's yes. never worked out for It's that. never worked it's out never once. worked out. That, so, uh, with that understanding moving forward... Please then don't do it because there's another 186 souls who want to get to uh, fucking Cleveland uh, and you've ruined the entire I'm, trip for them. I'm always waiting when I'm on a plane. I'm waiting for someone to freak out because I have this fantasy of, of like going over and putting them in a headlock and being like, listen, you son of a bitch, you're walking off this plane right now. Right. But in reality, I would just sit there and go, oh, oh and like live tweet it like, right. a, like the coward Like I a am. hero. <laughs> that was always my funny uh, Kimmel story when we were flying out to New York about eight days after 9-11. Like, we're literally heading to New 9-19? York. 9-19? Mm. Yes. Never forget. They never forget 9-19, and we're going there to do the Hefner Roast, the Comedy oh, Central Roast. It was amazing. And, and there's <laughs> there still buildings were still burning and stuff. And we're driving to the airport, and he was, we're going to sit, we're sitting in first class, and we're in, like, the front of first class, and Jimmy, all the way to the airport, is like, my head's going to be on a swivel. I hear anything, I see anything, I smell something that doesn't smell right, I will go flying as a, like a human shield. I will attack anybody who's trying to get to the cockpit. There's no reinforced doors. Right. We we didn't retrofit the doors right. yet. So no. it's like if anyone bum rushes that thing, I'm going to sit on the aisle and my head's going to be on the swivel like a middle linebacker dropping back into his hook zone. We get on the flight, we start taxing, I look at him, he's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mouth is open. <laughs> Like, although maybe that's the just what he wants the terrorist. The perfect yes. decoy. Yes. <laughs> she seemed pretty asleep. <laughs> Hurry, he's sleeping. Go now. <laughs> I also remember one time we're flying to, I don't know, Florida or something, and he handed me a pot chocolate chip cookie. Oh, no. And he no. said, like, have a bite of this. That'll put you out. And I was like, Okay. And I held it up, and I started to bite in it. And he's like, hey, man, watch it. And he, like, hung a napkin over my head. I was like, it's okay if it's shaped. You're like actually you're drawing more attention to us because this could be. Yeah. You know what's innocuous? A cookie in my hand. Not all cookies have drugs in them. It's probably less than half. You know what's cause for alarm? You're throwing a napkin over the a cookie. napkin over my head. He wants to like, hey, dude, watch out. God. Maintain. Careful you point that. <laughs> well, speaking right. of Jimmy, got some Jimmy news right here. Page oh. six reports that Jimmy Kimmel will see a dream come true when he opens a comedy club next spring in Las Vegas, oh, where he will make regular that's not, appearances. That's not what. Not his happening? real luck. Oh God, his dream is completing the trifecta. Oh, okay. We were on a shuttle bus going into Irvine Meadows and he farted up the shuttle bus sure. and at some point the driver got out a can of wizard and like sprayed it at him. Like like it, it with malice. Right. Like it was mace. Like, it, yeah. it was aggressive. <laughs> he could have sued that person. <laughs> Later on when we're on my bachelor party, we're on like a Southwest flight. He'd fart up the back of the plane and the sewers once again went for the wizard, and like sprayed it at him. My thing is, is now you got to do this on a train. And if you if you could do this on a train, then that's it. That's oh, a trifecta. Rotation. That's a life Wait, lived. Uh, well, does it mention anything about his ass exploding on a train? <laughs> well, how do, you make, how, do you, how do you guys think he's getting to Vegas? Oh, yeah. the bullet oh, train. The whole reason he opens club. The long con. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm so, going to see him later today. <laughs> well, oh, you're going on the show. I'm ask doing a whole man show thing. I'm doing you and then his show, and then I'm going to do the, the one of the Jugglin girls has a podcast. <laughs> the Rogan, the, 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 the Jugcast. <laughs> Yeah. So apparently he's doing this. The late night talk show host joined casino giant Caesars Entertainment in announcing the plans for the newest comedy club in Vegas. He's a native, as you know, to Vegas. He spent a year planning everything from ceiling height to food for the oh venue. Oh, my God. Best. That his They're going to be the best best yeah. chicken ever. fingers ever. Because every uh, food it's, at every comedy club is terrible, and they always try to make it like gonna a be comedy great. thing. Oh, not where Jimmy is. Yeah, Jimmy's going to make it good. So, I said yeah. to him, hey, man, put me on the marquee. He said, let's start you in the belly room. <laughs> See what the reaction is. Yeah. Is. It's look. It's the, a big thirty-five seater. It open, feels bigger than thirty-five open mic on seats tu- on Tuesdays. So open mic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, he says. No, but he stories. said I could host it. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. saying open o- mic. <laughs> Definitely host. They need a host. Obviously, right. It's two stories, three hundred seats. It'll have big names, uh, new talent chosen by Jimmy and his team. This is very exciting. Yeah, I think he's going to go down there and film and and do other do other stuff like that. And, this is and, a layup. And, and again, the. F- the food is just, that's going to be the greatest because yeah. he's going to get into so many out. arguments over the food. He's going to be like the Nero gonna and gonna Casino yes. when he's like, yeah. how many blueberries are <laughs> yes. in this? That's, you need the exact Tell same amount of blueberries in every single one. That's going to be Jimmy's life now. <laughs> Do you know how much time it's going to take? Life. I don't care how much time it's going to take. <laughs> his entire life is going to be over how many bako bits are on the potato skins. He's going to do that, but it'll be potato skins with bako bits. You know who we have to thank for this? Hmm. Uh, in, in Vegas, you know, they're the sports book, right? Everyone has a sports sure. book where the sport, you know, the gambling, you can watch the games. Uh, at uh, I think it's at the Palazzo. They have Emerald Stadium. And it's. Yes, it's, it's my a, friend sport, just watched it's incredible. football there. It's incredible. It's, it's, a sports, it. it's a sports book, but it's like Emerald's restaurant sports mm-hmm. book. So it's like tiered seating. And it's like, oh, this is what a sports book can be. And now yeah. the Jimmy's like, you know, oh, this is what a comedy club. Let's, let's get the best food and the best whatever. So that's. Uh, yeah. That's the tipping point. Yeah, it's going to take it. Well, it's going to be like when ballparks used to just have uh-huh. crap food and uh-huh. now they have gourmet stuff. It's going like to be like when great. I go to a Laker game now, I'm like, uh, I'm going to miss a whole quarter to wait in line for Ludo's chicken. <laughs> right. Right. Yes, oh, right. yes. Is the fried amazing, chicken. Amazing, by the way. It is. Yeah. Um, a live show, maybe a live show. Oh, yeah. Go, we'll go over there and do a live yes. pod over there. Ooh. Awesome. Oh, Mike Ogg's going to eat that place <laughs> right out of business, man. <laughs> like the Blues Brothers. Well, you guys made, you guys made four bucks, but you drank $600 yeah. of beer. He really is the only guy I know goes to he goes to like uh, comedy clubs and orders like the surf and turf and stuff. And I'm like, Mike, just get the f- curly fries. It's never going to work. He's the like, pie. And like I'm in be. the mood for sushi. Yeah. And I'm like, I know, but it won't work. Try Mike. the improv nachos, my friend. That's right. what you should be eating. <laughs> right. All right, well, switching gears here a little bit, NBC News reports that the FBI has foiled a New York man's plot to detonate a 200-pound bomb on the National Mall in D.C. Uh, on Election on. Day. Can I just tell you? Oh, Vinny Torres looks terrible. No, the, the, no. We're looking at him. The best. <laughs> yeah. Paul Think Rudd has great. lost a lot yeah, of weight. Finally, <laughs> it caught up with Paul Rudd. Everyone's yeah. like, he's so hot, but not anymore, I guess. Uh The best part, I don't know, Ike, if, if this resonates with you or not, but uh, what the best part about Jimmy farting up the bus, uh, the shuttle bus, is the one hipster guy who's going, because you know, we're going back and forth to Irvine Meadows, and he's there, and he's like the manager for some 41 or something. He's like the hipster guy. And the guy gets ultra serious, like after Jimmy's seventh fart. He's like, dude. It's not funny anymore. Like, I don't know why, but that sent that me. That made it 10 times funnier. I was, I was already at a 10 in the laughter department, but when the hipster guy gets real earnest, like, dude. And by the way, you can't find someone who's laughing their ass off and explain to them. It's, it's not, funny. not funny anymore. Okay? Like, just that we're now at the next strata of funny. For me, that was the greatest. Good. The super serious fart guy. <laughs> Come on, guys. Dude, enough. Enough already. Yeah, like you're throwing it at a well-placed dude, dude, and he's serious. There's other people on this bus. You're being selfish. <laughs> yeah, with an element of it's me talking now. Indignant. Even though we don't know yeah. who the you are. are speaking. Right. Yeah. Wait a minute. You wearing a Beach Boys hat? Who is that? <laughs> is that Mike Love? <laughs> that, that made it the best. I, I, I was oh already God bless I was him. already fucking falling over, <laughs> and then that guy brought me to the next level. <laughs> When if you're getting castigated for a fart and you're over the age of thirty, it's already like the funniest thing in the world. Uh, yeah, and decorum's not at the top of your list. Like we're not going to butt shame you at this point. Holy God! Oh, it's the oh, best. God Almighty. 
Mm. The best. All right. All right. So this guy, authorities say he's 56-year-old Paul Rosenfeld uh, from Rockland County, New I York. I knew it was a Jew. Always, always a Jew. Always, always, always a soldier to terrorist, terrorist yeah. activity. <laughs> always. Tale as old as time. He built the bomb in his basement, planned to bring it to Washington where he would blow himself up. Investigators believe Rosenfeld wanted to bring attention to a political ideology called sortition. Are you mm. familiar? I'm no. very into sortition. <laughs> Everyone is going to be after I blow their asses to hell. Is that where you protest and then get a cuticle push? Yes, you're both right. It also means it's an ancient method of randomly selecting people to serve in government, like you randomly select jurors. There it is. Feds sortition. Learned- sortition. His bomb was going <laughs> to convince us all to go yeah. sortition. You know, he had a point. <laughs> Feds learned of his plot after he sent letters and texts to a news reporter outlining his plan. <laughs> Investigators discovered the bomb inside his house and it. <laughs> It was safely can, I say, removed. can I say this? That part where you learn stuff after a person told you exactly what they're going to do and <laughs> sent you a letter, that's not really that's learning. That's not really good police yeah. work. That's them <laughs> sending you shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Well, like, this is what we learned. <laughs> How'd you blow the lid off this case? <laughs> well, registered mail. <laughs> and 18 texts. Yeah. I think I'll be cracked that case. Yeah. Yeah. A manifesto with a date, a time stamp on See, it. See, Columbo, <laughs> uh, one last thing. Uh, I opened my mail. <laughs> <laughs> Signature receipt. Yeah. Yeah, so this guy has been arrested, charged with unlawful manufacturer of a destructive device. I, I don't, think the last person to have that was Jimmy's ass. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Back. I don't like the, uh, I don't mind the whole sort of uh, the yogi or the uh, shaman or the whatever oh, lighting the themselves. Yeah. The immolation, the lighting themselves on fire. To too. protest the war. That's okay. To to protest, that's okay. But if you blow yourself up, yeah, somebody could get hit with like your jawbone or your yes. femur or yes. something like and that. And then the worst part is, is if God forbid someone you know died in that explosion, you have to be like, oh, someone was protesting sortition. Right. And you have to like that. You have to become an expert on sortition. Or it just sucks. Good point. look, I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but what if his dick goes airborne? <laughs> It lands in your mouth. <laughs> and now you're gay? Wow. No, you're like, you're in D.C. and you're looking up at the Washington Monument and you're like, I'm opening your mouth to be like, ah, what a amazing uh, work. And awesome. then all of a sudden there's just right. a severed dick in your mouth. And, you know, my friends would be like, oh, you know, you didn't know Adam's gay? And I'd be like, I'm not gay. And they'd go, true or false? If he had a dick in your mouth or not? And I'd go, <sighs> well, that was that true, one time okay. in true, but, true, but, but that was the first sortition. sortition. That was the sort of thing about sortition. <laughs> <laughs> the first be like, oh, I got to catch a flight, and they'd leave, and I'd be running after them, going, no, there's a context here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's uh, something that could happen. Are you worried about that? <laughs> could, wow, <laughs> I don't stay up at night worrying about it, it's but it's a definite mind. possibility. <laughs> yeah. You're more worried about it now than you were ten seconds ago. <laughs> the dick's going to land someplace, and if you do in a populated area, there's a decent enough chance it's going to land on a fella. I right. would be fine with it because I have the greatest story. Like, I, I, you know, people just be like, "Oh, Ike, did you hear a story? He was in D.C. A dick landed in his mouth. This guy was protesting sortition." <laughs> Right. I can't stop saying sortition, man. It's crazy. <laughs> but then your friends would start poking around, and he'd be like, but also you said a $50 bill landed in your pocket? And he'd be like, yeah, it was all part of the Where same the explosion. Thing? You're like, well, that's quite a coincidence, isn't it, Ike? And he'd be like, I know. That's what I said. Hold on, I, I can't. I got to go. The flight to D.C. is taking off. I'm going back. <laughs> <laughs> and you got pink eye all in the same day. <laughs> Interesting. Right? Add up. It's very interesting. And you developed a meth problem earlier in the week, but you're saying it was all through the sortition. It's sortition. Stop, <laughs> stop it, guys. It's sortition. You don't understand. Okay, so you just started donning knee pads. Uh, had a problem with sortition. meth. Sortition. <laughs> Posted on Craigslist. <laughs> so I sold a couch. <laughs> a $50 bill in cash in your front right pocket. You're hanging a white bandana out of the rear of your Wrangler's left side. Yet you're chalking this entire thing up to sortition. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Sortition. Okay. It's, don't blame me. Blame the sortition. <laughs> thing. I want to believe you. I'm a married man. I have three daughters. It's sortition. Trust as, me. But understand, as a, at a certain point... Yeah, uh, it just sounds like you're a gay trick you pulled. That's no, all. I don't care what you, it sounds like to you. This is not about me and my sexual okay. proclivities. It's about sortition <clears throat> and why we have to stop it or have more of I, it. Well, just one last <laughs> final question. Why are you attempting to blow me right now? 
<laughs> while reaching around and grabbing for my wallet. What's this? Is? <laughs> okay. All right. But put yourself in my shoes. He's trying to. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> so it's Sortition. Yeah. It's Sortition. Okay. Also, it's a year from now, I comes in to promote the Sortition, this new movie that he wrote and directed. <laughs> a star is Sortition. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One, uh, oh, let me tell you about Castrol Ash. <laughs> It'll put to bring us down to earth. Heat, friction, viscosity, breakdown, rob your engine maximum performance. Friction results in a loss of performance up to 10%. Castrol Edge, engineered with fluid titanium technology, physically transforms and gets stronger under pressure, helps fight against friction, and delivers maximum levels of performance for your car three times. Three times, fool! Three times stronger against viscosity breakdown than leading loss. Castrol Edge, unlock the performance in your engine. All right, Gina, what else? Well, we haven't had any Weinstein news in a while, so what say we do that? On Thursday, the judge overseeing hard... Harvey Weinstein's criminal case dropped one of the six criminal counts levied against the former movie producer. That change of committing a criminal sex act in the first degree resulted from the uh, allegations of the former actor Lucia Evans, who alleged uh, who alleged that Weinstein had forced her to perform oral sex on him in 2004 when she was a college student. But according to The New York Times, prosecutors acknowledged that they had discovered inconsistencies in statements made by one of uh, the accusers. And what I heard coming in here is she had, uh, I guess, apparently Evans had admitted to a friend, allegedly, that she did that willingly, and they didn't want that to come out in the hearing. So they're down to five. So they're down to five. So he could, like, call his wife, like Weinstein, and can go, like, hey, I know things have been pretty rough, but we're down to just one yeah. hand. Yeah. Good, news. One the I mean, some good news. Honey. I we're no longer, some good news. We're no longer counting with both hands anymore. We're yeah. down to just five with the one gal. Right. And then there's, you know, bevy of others, but with the one, you got whittled down to one hand. Yeah. Not too shabby. You huh? count all my accusers on one hand. Is she the main one, or is there going to be a whole the bunch of ones? Yeah, I mean, I, is there a main one? I don't know. Well, there's, there's a, a New York It's an one. ensemble piece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's uh, some L.A. and there's some European oh, stuff. Ashley Judd. Oh, Ashley Judd. Oh, Ashley Judd. He was in Cannes, right? Wasn't he always yeah. like grabbing uh, people in Cannes and masturbating into plants in Cannes? Mm-hmm. If you're going to masturbate into a plant, do it in Cannes, by the way. Yeah. They're more lenient. Yeah. 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 Hit the road. Oh, by the way, there was a fair, there was some Louis C.K. like masturbating into plants, too, or just masturbating. Masturbating. Plants were involved. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Was Louis C.K. just masturbating? Or yeah, was I don't it? think he went into plants. I think he just... He just yeah. jacked off in front of people who yeah. did not want sort him of to back, jack off in front of them. <laughs> back Backstage, sort of like at clubs and stuff? Like where... I, I think it was like in... Like one was like in a green room. Or like, yeah, he was yeah, yeah. other com- It was in front of other comics. Yeah. It was at oh, Jimmy's new club. Ma- yeah, make a note. Tell Jimmy I'll christen uh, his place <laughs> when I get out there. Uh, yeah. Well, you know... Look, I don't want to defend uh, Harvey, but, but. <clears throat> if you are, in fact, going to beat off indoors, uh, it's going to slide a ficus under you. You know what it's I mean? It's basically I mean, mulch. Yeah. It's I valuable mean, mulch. You, you know, let's give the devil his due. Just whacking off on a carpet square. That's kind of rude to the next comedian who's right. coming in there. Or Harvey is going a on. monster and will rot in hell for a million years. But as a horticulturalist? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gotta give him some slack. He's a beak of hope. Yeah. Slack. yeah. I wonder if he's something he did at home. Like like he'd go like one year he'd say to his wife, like, let's get one of those living Christmas trees. And she's like, no, absolutely <laughs> not. not. We're going with the fake one. Fool me once. Why not? What's, why are you so uptight, Harvey? You no. know. <laughs> no. Just no. Why? It's so much better for the environment. Harvey, we go with the fake tree. Don't make we me do it every it. year. The, the kids are in the fucking next room. Do I really? Do I really have to verbalize my objections to this, or do we just fucking put up the fake tree? The, 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 there could have been that conversation in his house. That's not like out of the realm of possibility. It really is. It's really not. You're there's dealing a, with a, a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Must be weird every time you want to talk about potted plants in front of his wife. All right. Sorry. What else we got? Well, fans of late British singer Amy Winehouse, whose uh, untimely death in 2011 at age 27 shook the music world. She will. You will be able to when see her. When did she her die? In 2011. Wow. She's 27 years old for the 27 Club. You are going to be able to see her again in concerts. Hologram. On stage. 
<gasps> by way of hologram, Whoa. according to Reuters. The show, expected to debut next year, will be created by the same company that produced hologram tours for Roy Orbison, for opera singer Marie Callis, Maria Callis. Uh, producers hope to take the concert around the world for three years. The Winehouse hologram will be projected on stage in front of a live band that will accommodate the voice uh, from her original recordings. Mitch Winehouse, I believe that's her father, mm. said all the money uh, the family receives will go to the Amy Winehouse Foundation, which was established after her death to help young people suffering with substance abuse. Wasn't yeah. her dad like a bad guy though? <clears throat> I watched that documentary. Wasn't he kind of like didn't present him as a yeah. as an outstanding citizen. And he's in charge of the foundation now? Sure. Mm. Um couple things. Uh how about the first fatality that this causes by the overzealous concert goer who drops a tab of peyote, charges the stage, <laughs> and, falls and does right that off. move where it's like, I'm going to hug him. Oh. You know that hug him yeah. from behind yeah. move? Like a come up behind come him. Roy Orbison. And just goes sailing right off the edge of the stage. So that's kind of on time. Them. They'll bring them back as a hologram audience member. <laughs> oh, that's what they're going to have to do. <laughs> it never ends. It's going to be weird. I wonder if they're going to have like hologram security. Like guy gets up on stage, <laughs> big hologram of a black guy in a turtleneck. I can't grab him. I mean, it's weird. I, it's, but, yeah. but now Roy is, Roy is all, she's newer. But yeah. I mean, well, with, they did this with Tupac at Coachella, right? Music. But with Bieber and like anyone now, yep. it's there's so much digital, like high yes. def, yeah. high res yes. digital of everything yes. all the time that we'll just do this with everyone Easy. at any time, right? Well, remember the commercial wasn't like Fred Astaire dancing with a vacuum, and we were amazed yes. that yes. they could make this happen. And now it was that's... the biggest news story of 1998. It was. <laughs> and now Simpler that's so times. common. Yeah. It's true. Can I say this? I don't know what hologram etiquette is, but if I'm a fan and I want to go see this dead person on tour, don't do the thing where you have like 30 different cities and then one date. I want them to go through the calendar. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want them at Cleveland and oh, in Ohio. Oh, right, like at the same make time. it special. Playing the, yeah. playing the Civic Center out it's here. Oh, it's going to bum me out make if I know that. Yeah. If it's just like 30 cities and it just goes one no. date. Yeah, I want that concert t shirt thing. Right. And I want like a bus to pull up. I want them to have yeah. a seat yeah. on yeah. the bus. Yep. Yes. I want now, like a hologram now to get off the bus. Now you're talking. Now you're making sense. You didn't make sense up until now. You're making sense. I want to be and greet afterwards. And I also want that. Break in the dates of like from the 19th to the 23rd. Like, come on, you got to give him a break. It's Jesus his wife's Christ. birthday. It's his wife's birthday. And I want some excuses every once in a while. We're like, well, Ooh. dehydration. Yeah. They can't perform. Oh, we know what Can- that means. Canceled gig. Dr. Well, Drew knows yeah. what that means. That ain't dehydration. Exhaustion. She's every- 27. Yeah. It's not dehydration. The hologram That's right. is very exhausted. Yeah. Right. Every seventh show, canceled. Yeah, canceled. Yeah. That's good. I right. want the hologram standing outside the merch table, like shaking hands and offering to take <laughs> selfies with fans. I How- like the bus idea. Yeah. Yeah. I like the merch idea. Yes. How much are they allowed to charge for tickets? Not a full mm. freight like she's there. No. That's not fair. No, that's not fair, but... But she's there. You're seeing, still, her, you're seeing her perform? You're, you're paying for that. Well, you know, there's I don't a know. band, I assume. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel like you could be undercut by the theater across the street who's got the Amy Winehouse <laughs> production. It was like, oh, we're, you're charging 50 bucks? Oh, we'll man. do it for 44. <laughs> we have a projector. Like, <laughs> yeah, because it's got to be licensed everything. Yeah. I, I bet it'll be surprisingly expensive. Yeah. The novelty yeah. of it, for sure. I guess yeah. But also, it makes sense, because you could you could just go, at some point, like in the audience, you could go to the projectionist guy, like, look, I think everyone has to go to the bathroom, and like a cold Let's one, can we just go ahead sec. and, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to do a thing where I'm hearing it from the bathroom, right. or waiting in the beer it's, line. It's a simple pause button. You talked yeah. about the great chicken they have over there. At the yeah. Ludo's. Oh, Ludo's chicken, Right, baby. wouldn't it be nice if you could just kind of yes. hold oh. the phone? Yes, yes. Just stop right. it, we're all going to get Hit some pause, chicken, and all run out and take back. a piss, we'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know if I speak for everyone, but I'm more interested in seeing a hologram Amy Winehouse than I would be in seeing the actual Amy Winehouse. Well, the hologram will show up. That's the point. Mm-hmm. She, she didn't show up a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get through every song. Yeah. 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 Mm. Good point. Yeah, I like it. I, I just, uh, I agree. I want the tour bus parked out yeah. front. I want the merch table. Give, give me the, the full entire, experience, please. I want the entire thing. Yes. yes. Yep. All right. Let me take quickly about uh, Geico. Everyone's got the to-do list. How about you pick up some milk and uh, take out the dog and bring in the cat? How about you go to Geico.com? 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on your car insurance. Take that extra money. Put it in your pocket. 
Get some Amy Winehouse tickets. Go see her live, man. Just go to Geico.com. 15 minutes. You could be saving 15% or more on your auto insurance at Geico. That's Geico.com. All right, one more, Gina Grant. All right. Well, Google Maps and Google Street View have led to some pretty funny images. A lot of them have gone viral. Uh, it's bound to happen when you try to photograph every street in the world. But now, however, Google Street View uh, actually led to a couple getting divorced. And here's how. It happened in Peru, where a man was planning out a drive and used the site to just give him a better idea how to get there. That's when he stumbled upon an image of a woman on a bench with a guy laying on her lap, uh, you know, with his head on her lap, even though the woman's face was blurred out. He knew it was his wife based on her clothes and her appearance and how she was sitting. That photo was taken in 2013. So not only did he realize she was cheating, she's been cheating for the last five years. He shared the photo on Facebook, revealing that the uh, <clears throat> that he confronted his wife with the evidence. She admitted she's been unfaithful all this time, and now they are divorced. Wow. Just because wow. he's trying to find <clears throat> the fastest way to work. Don't you feel like you could talk your way out of this as the Peruvian woman? Like, there's this well-dressed bum... <laughs> And his, this man fainted in front of me. Yeah, like, and I was a good Samaritan. And whip up something. He's just got his head on your thigh. Number one. Number two. There's going to be a lawsuit now, right? Like she can sue because mm. you're in no a public, public place. place. Yeah, but, I don't know what the laws are like in <clears throat> Lima, Peru. Oh, very strange. Pretty strange over there. Yeah. Strange. Yeah. <laughs> Garagos is working I, a class action. I can't believe Google Earth is there. there. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. I thought like they. I, I don't even know they come to Glendale. Google yeah. Earth. Yeah, we should talk to them. But I, they got pretty deep pockets okay. over there, Google. I bet she might be able to. Uh, get, nuisance, nuisance money. Eh, just give them throw a few bucks to go away. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? mm-hmm. Wow, we're there. Yeah, we're there. Wow. There's one, I don't know. I mean, I think this is now just kind of a folklore. Uh, but remember that really big one that was in the last year or two where you thought you saw a guy dragging a dead body yeah. on mm-hmm. Google Earth? That was a yeah, big one, too. That, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've gotten into this in my personal life a little bit because I got a uh, one of those uh, intersection camera mm-hmm. tickets, uh, yep. red light tickets, and I was just driving alone. I was just alone, and Lynette was like, "I know you're being blown." <laughs> I was like, "What? <laughs> what?" what? And she's like, "Come on, look at your face," <laughs> and I was like, "No," and she's like, "I know what I know," and I was like. You really can't disprove it. You know what I mean? Like, honey, you know I love driving through hard yellow lights. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my thing. Yeah, hard, huh, honey? <laughs> you, it's, it's just hard. You can't disprove it. Right? You know, and I was in yeah. a Kavanaugh the kind of situation you, yeah. there. You know, she just said, I know what I know. And I said, but there's nobody in the passenger seat. And she said, because they're down there. They're blowing you. And I was just like, <laughs> We're just gonna have to agree to disagree. But you, you, you could, uh, couldn't you still see like like a butt in the front? Like well, legs I was or arguing that, yeah, it's pretty vehemently. <laughs> but I have a high dash. It's a low angle camera, but is- also a high bar for yeah. proof. And anyway, I shouldn't even brought it up, but it was it was. I'm it, sorry. It that's sorry. Been, well, it, I'm saying it because it could happen to others. Yeah. Learn from this. Learn Cautionary. From this. <laughs> That's why I always drive with a male friend. In the yeah, seat. and part of her argument was you would never have your arm around the headrest of the seat in front of you if someone wasn't there. That is true, that's actually. You never point. put your arm around the front seat unless you're getting blown in your car. Right. That is, that's if, that is a fact. That was part of her argument. Yeah. And the other part is why is there a purse on the dashboard oh. and pumps? Yeah. So at see. that point, I was like, you know what? Let's just again agree. I think I'm on her side. Agree now. I think to that disagree. Last piece well, of information swayed me, and I and I like you because I know you. I don't know her, but I think she's right on this. And shame on you. Well, again, we'll agree to disagree. Okay. okay. It's just not something. Sordition. What's it called? Sordition. <laughs> Sordition. <laughs> something you can you can prove. You know, yeah, and then also it had to be really hard for you. Part of her argument was I had butt dialed her simultaneously, and she just heard a recording of me screaming, "I'm coming, goddamn it, I'm coming!" <laughs> this and is such I, a great blowjob. I, I, I told <laughs> this her, is such a great blowjob, Andrea. <laughs> when you're running late to an audition, that is something you just say to the heavens. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Now, this is probably bad that I shifted my weight so harshly that it was to set off the phone that way and dial her, but I'm still standing <clears throat> by my story. And then later on, she went out the garage and said, you know, there's a woman who's still in your car. 
And I was like, okay, but no one said it was the same woman. Yep, yep. Or- but she did have a t-shirt that said the blowjob queen of the 818. <laughs> <laughs> she did, but she wore that ironically, not... It's, it's like Honey, it's because she's bad at blowjobs, therefore I wouldn't want one. Right. I guess my wife doesn't understand irony. What do they call that, a meme? <laughs> anyway, I said we'll agree to disagree for the 55th and last time, and we went in separate parts of the house. And again, maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. I don't know. Nah. But I, I'm worried about other guys yeah. who could be falsely accused. Take a lesson. It could happen. <clears throat> yeah. It could happen. Do we bring it home? We'll bring it home. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. <laughs> Gina, Gina Grad! That was the news with Gina Grad. And then this old Jew blew himself up, <laughs> and there was... A they don't do that. <laughs> All right, let's bring it home. Simply Safe, everyone. Home security. We love Simply Safe. Two eyes in there. These guys are great sponsors. You should get your protection with Simply Safe. Ridiculously easy to use. No hidden fees. No pricey contract. Get it simplysafe.com slash Adam. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, Q Drinks. That's right. Thanks to Q Drinks for my high quality mixers they've been uh, giving me. I just had a tonic. One of vodka tonic uh, last uh, football Sunday. Nice. So you can visit QDrinks.com. They're supplying us with some fun mixers over here. Live shows everywhere. Just go to AdamCarolla.com for that. Say hi to Lynette over at Corolla Drinks. Ike Barinholtz, everybody. Thank the you, oath. guys. Yes. The Oath in select theaters. That is uh, Friday, October 12th. That's today as you hear this. And then everywhere wide after that on October 19th. And you can uh, shoot them a tweet at Ike Barinholtz. Uh, if you like, thanks, Ike. Love having you. Thank you, you guys so much. Really appreciate it. And until next time, Adam Crow for Ike Barinholtz. Oh, and uh, Dan, uh, Patrick. Dan Patrick and Gina Grant and Bo Brian say, Mahalo. Fatty, fatty, Brian Bishop. Follow the Adam Carolla Show on Twitter at Adam Carolla Show. Follow us on Twitter at Adam Carolla. Come out tomorrow for Carolla Drinks presents the World Championship of Guacamole. It's not tomorrow, it's Saturday, which is tomorrow. Good job, Dawson. Subscribe to Fantasy BS, hosted by Bald Brian and Sunny Carolla on Podcast One. Phoenix, stand up live. Uh, two basic cable commentary shows coming your way. Uh, on October 27th, tickets and involved on the live podcast, the Mandarin events, the books, movies, and more. Go to adamcarolla.com. And now, a thought from Geico Motorcycle. It took 15 minutes to purchase the gas station egg salad. Eat the gas station egg salad. And regret the gas station egg salad as you presented numbers to the board. <clears throat> to add insult to injury, you could have used those 15 egg salad minutes to switch your motorcycle insurance to GEICO. Uh-oh. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. As a young boy, Gavin loved playing football. He lived and breathed it, wanted to go pro. Why, he'd spent hours upon hours just practicing his touchdown dances. And one day, while getting fitted for bifocals, He realized he was never much good at throwing, or running, or catching, or even kicking. Yeah, Gavin's chances of playing pro football were looking like fourth and long. Very long. But he did hear how Geico could save him money on car insurance, so he switched and saved. Then he did kind of a touchdown dance. At least he was still good at that. Looking for more victims. I'm Tim McGuire with an AP Newsman. The death toll from Hurricane Michael expected to climb. Head of a search and rescue team at Mexico Beach, Florida, where the massive storm came ashore, says at least one body has been found. Florida Senator Bill Nelson says he was shocked by the damage to the town. There's no barrier island out there to protect it. Full force of the wind and the wave of water that came and what you see are houses that are no longer, you see the concrete slab of the house, and that's all that's left. Florida officials have completed an initial hasty search looking for the living or the dead and have begun more careful inspections of thousands of ruined buildings. At least 13 people are dead, including five killed in Virginia after heavy rain touched off flash flooding in parts of that state. More than a million homes and businesses without power along the path of the storm. Florida officials say it may be weeks before the electricity is restored to all of the panhandle. I'm Tim McGuire.